everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reed, and today we are going to talk about many of the different methods that we can utilize to calculate rate. And then, you know, you can maybe learn a little bit about, about, about what, what scenarios are going to um, kind of call upon certain types of methods to calculate the rate. Because, you know, we might use one method with a certain type of rhythm and another with a different one, right? And so we're going to kind of start with just a little bit of the basics. So remember that it, on our ECG strip, that the x-axis is time, right? So time is measured on the x-axis of this ECG strip. And let's just review quickly about the units of time if I zoom in on this rhythm. And so we have what I would call one big box. I just call this a big box. One big box is five millimeters by five millimeters, okay? And a little box is obviously one millimeter by one millimeter, right? And so I'll maybe put it right here. One little box is one millimeter by one millimeter, right? Height and width. And so we said time was the x-axis, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about the width of these. So let's talk about what the units are of each. So one big box, the five millimeter by five millimeter, the measurements are as such. So one big box is 200 milliseconds, okay? And if we divide that by the five little boxes, right? There are five little boxes in between. We know that one little box here is going to be one fifth of that, which is 40 milliseconds in time. Okay, so those are just our basic units. And so we know that if this is, if one of our big boxes that's 200 milliseconds, if we put five of those together, if we multiply that by five, we get 1,000 milliseconds or one second, right? And so if we kind of put that together, what that means is that five little box, or excuse me, five big boxes, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Five boxes here represents one second, okay? And so that's kind of the idea of the timing. So there's a couple ways that we can uh, develop a strategy to determine a rate. So if we know that five big boxes is one second, and we know that there are 60 seconds in one minute, we know that if the rhythm beats every five boxes, that it would be a 60 beats per minute, because each beat is happening every second, there's 60 seconds in a minute. But not every rhythm is going to fall uh, on such a perfect pattern for us. And so there's a couple different methods. One method that I like the most is you count the number of big boxes. So let's do that here. So we have a QRS that lands on a solid line. And so I count the number of big boxes in between this QRS and this QRS, okay? So we have one, two, three, and then a little bit more than three. Okay, we will call that three point, maybe three. Three point three big boxes. So one of the ways you can calculate the rate is you can take 300 divided by the number of big boxes, right? So in this case, we would do 300 divided by 3.3. And what do we get? Put it into my calculator right now. We get 91 beats per minute. So that's a pretty uh, reasonable way to do it. There's another way that you can do it, kind of the eyeball test. So we said that if 300 divided by the number of big boxes is how we would calculate the rate, well, what you can then learn how to do 
is apply that to each box. So say we have a QRS that starts on this solid line. So we know that a rhythm that would land on this line is 300 divided by one big box. So that would be 300 beats per minute. If it lands on this one, 300 divided by two big boxes is 150. If it lands on this line, 300 divided by three big boxes is 100. Keep going. 300 divided by four is 75. 300 divided by five is 60. 300 divided by six is 50. And then we get 300 divided by seven for the last one, which is around 43. So if you want, you can actually eyeball the rhythm by counting the number of big boxes, right? So for this rhythm, if we wanted to eyeball it, and I started up here on a solid line, I would count 300, 150, 100. This is 75, and this is 100. So I know that the rate of this ECG is somewhere between 175. It's closer to 100, so you can maybe kind of eyeball it and say 90 beats per minute, which is pretty close to what we got when we calculated it. So that's another way that you can, if you don't want to, if you don't need a perfect calculation for the rate, you can do it with what I would call the eyeball test. So we have a couple different ways using the big boxes to calculate our rate, right? We have the first, which is we can calculate it with 300 divided by the number of big boxes, or we can eyeball it with this calculation. So that's one way. And let's look at another way to do it with a little bit of a faster rhythm, right? And so I want you to first just recognize that this, this, this really works if it's a regular rhythm, right? Every interval between the QRS complexes, which remember our QRS complexes are ventricular depolarization, notice how regular this is. So if we're going to measure, it needs to be regular the entire time so that we can extrapolate that data to the rest of the ECG. So let's go to the next ECG here. This one's going to be of an ECG that's a little bit faster. And so here we have our faster rhythm. And so using that method that we just said, try it again here. So we said that maybe we find QRS that lands on a nice solid line that it helps us start out. And if I did the eyeball method, I would say 300. 150, 100, so somewhere between 100 and 150 beats per minute. I would guess, based off of that, closer to 100, I would say 115 beats per minute. Okay, now let's do the other method where we actually do the math. So we start here, 300, or one big box, excuse me, two big boxes, in between two and three big boxes, so we'll say 2.7 five big boxes and so we know that the way we calculate it is we would do 300 divided by the number of big boxes so 300 divided by 2.75 and this gives us a calculated rate of 109 beats per minute so you can see there's a little bit of error so it depends we're in the ballpark but there's a little bit of error here between these two right these are not the most perfect calculations. And so I find for tachycardias, there's a lot more room for error using these methods. So let's go a little bit deeper and learn a different way. So we said that we could do 300 divided by the number of big boxes to get the rate. Well, what about the little boxes? So what you can do is you can actually find, I'll find another QRS that lands on a solid line. We'll do, looks like maybe this one lands on a solid line. So what you can actually do is to be more precise, you can do 1,500 divided by the number of little boxes, right? And so let's count here between this QRS and this QRS. Let's do the number of little boxes. We see we've got 5, 10, and then we have 11, 12, 13, 
about 14 little boxes, right? Or 14 millimeters. We said one little box is 14, or is one millimeter. So let's use that. Let's use 14 to calculate our new equation, 1,500 divided by the number of little boxes, which is 14. And what do we get? We get 107 beats per minute. And so this method is a little bit more precise when you have a tachycardia. So 1,500 divided by the number of little boxes, especially when you have a tachycardia that is regular like this, right? Notice how it's regular throughout the entire strip. Every QRS is regular. We get, we have first, we have error in our first types, but this is the best way to do it if you want to get a more precise rate whenever you have faster rhythms. Let's get a, another example here. This is a really fast one. This is an example of SVT. So this is a really fast, really regular rhythm. Notice that these QRSs are really regular, but they're just fast. So if we tried to eyeball it, and say we found this QRS that lands on a solid line, if I wanted to do the eyeball test, I would say that's 300, that's 150, somewhere between 150 and 300, maybe it's right in the middle, so maybe you're like 225 beats per minute, right? You're like in the ER, you're like, I just need to get this done fast, 225 beats per minute. And then you're colleague is like, okay, let's do it. Let's do the big box number. So we have, start here on this QRS, we've got one big box. Maybe we would call this a little over one and a half big boxes. Maybe I would call this 1.6 big boxes. And we know that we can do 300 divided by the number of big boxes, which is 1.6 to get our rate. So if I do 300 divided by 1.6, I get 188 beats per minute. Okay, so we're starting to get better. 188 beats per minute, that's a little bit more um, closer to what our actual rhythm is compared to what we'd calculated with our eyeball test, 225. Still, we, we got generally a tachycardia, but I would say 188 is different than 225. So we're starting to see that the more precise we can get at higher rates, the better. And so let's try to calculate the rate again using our method with the little boxes. And so maybe we find this QRS right here that lands on that solid line just after the solid line. And if I do little boxes, I see five. And then maybe there's eight, but you can see it's a little bit less than eight because this first one is just a little bit in front of that box or after that box, and this one's a little bit before. So maybe I call this 7.5 millimeters, 7.5 little boxes. And so remember, we do 1,500 divided by 7.5. If we do that, what do we get? We get 200 beats per minute. So notice that there's always going to be some error using the first two methods. So when you get really fast rhythms, this is probably the best one to use. 1,500 divided by the number of little boxes. But what happens if somebody has this rhythm? This is atrial fibrillation, right? It's a very irregular rhythm. It could be any type of irregular rhythm. What if it is irregular? What if this happens, right? Well, if I measure the rate from this one to this one, it might not work, right? Because look at, this is different. This is different. So I can't just look at these and measure this rate because it's not going to be able to extrapolate to the rest of the rhythm. So what do I do? Well, I know that five big boxes is one second, right? So we said that one, two, three, four, five. We said that five big boxes is one second, okay? Well, what we can do is we can determine how many seconds are in this ECG strip. And if you did the math the whole way, this entire ECG strip is six 
excuse me, not six seconds, is the entire ECG strip is 10 seconds. So what can we do if we know that 10 seconds, how many sets of 10 seconds is in one minute? There are six 10 second clips essentially in one minute. So what we can do is we can determine how many QRSs occur we could do the number of QRSs that occur in that 10 second window, and then we can multiply by 6 to see how many we would get in one minute. So let's do that here. So you can come down to the bottom and use the rhythm strip here, V5, and let's count. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have 15 QRS complexes. And we said that this is in a 10 second period, so we need to multiply that by 6. And what does that get us? 15 times 6 is 90 beats per minute. And that's an average rate for this person with an irregular rhythm. So that's a good example of how to use it there. Let's look at another ECG of an irregular rhythm. We have another example of AFib. This time the AFib is a little bit faster. right? So look how irregular this rhythm is. Some of them are closer together, some of them are farther, some of them are really close. So it's not like we can just pick like this interval and say that's the rhythm. We need to look at that right now. This is an irregular rhythm. And remember, Atrial fib is not the only irregular rhythm, so any irregularity you can use this method. So remember, we said we need to do, this is a 10 second clip, so we're going to calculate the number of QRSs in that 10 seconds and multiply it by 6 to get our rate. So let's do that. So we'll maybe come to this lead 2 rhythm strip here, and we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we've got 18 QRSs, and that's in a 10 second period. So we're going to do 18 QRS complexes times 6, because there's 6 10 seconds in a minute, and we get 108 beat per minute. So this person has a faster rate. This person has tachycardia. All right, so let's just review and write down all the different ways that we can calculate our QRS. So for if we have a regular rhythm, right, where the QRS is pretty much the same every single time, how can we calculate our rate? We can calculate it first by doing the eyeball test. The eyeball test, right, where we go 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 43, etc. We can do 300 divided by the number of big boxes. Or we can do 1500 divided by the number of little boxes. Alrighty, so I hope this helps. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and if not, have a great rest of your day. Take care.